founded in 1989, Gopio International's first convention of PIOs was held in New York. Currently, Gopio is active in 28 countries with over 78 chapters around the globe. Recent annual global conventions were held in Zurich, New York, New Delhi, Mumbai, Hyderabad, Trinidad and Bahrain. Gopio has been campaigning for issues of interest of the Indian diaspora on Capitol Hill and at the European Union as well as with the Government of India, Ministry of External Affairs. The mission of Gopio is to promote the well-being of people of Indian origin PIO and to enhance cooperation and communication between PIOs and other communities. The unique goal of Gopio is to present and promote the interests of India and PIOs and help shape relevant policies. Also to promote better understanding of Indian history, culture and customs and to mobilize the growing professional and intellectual resources of Indian Americans for economic and social programs which is beneficial to the community. Gopio Central Jersey chapter was formed in 2008 which serves as a non-partisan, secular, civic and community service organization to provide global forum to foster fellowship and enhance networking and help promoting awareness of Indian culture, customs and contributions of PIOs through community programs, forums, events and youth activities. Gopio Central Jersey seeks to strengthen partnership and create an ongoing dialogue with local communities. In the last decade, Gopio Central Jersey organized many community events to include health fairs, community recognition award ceremonies, financial and immigration seminars, health summits, and educational webinars during recent pandemic with COVID-19. Distinguished guests and elected lawmakers, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Thomas Abraham, Chairman of the Global Organization of People of Indian Origin. On behalf of Gopio Chapters and Indian American Impact Fund, I welcome you to this session, celebrating the victory of Indian Americans to the state houses. <coughs> Gopio International is a pan-Indian community organization for NRIs and PIOs with over 100 chapters spread in 35 countries. It was formed in New York in 1989 when our Indian diaspora community was outside the political mainstream in most of the countries except Mauritius. One of the main mission of Gopio was to get our diaspora in the mainstream politics of countries with substantial Indian diaspora population and we have somewhat achieved that goal now. In 1980, when we organized the first convention of Asian Indians in America, we had only two elected officials in the whole country, a city councilman from Norwalk, Connecticut, and another councilman in a small town called Narbeth, Pennsylvania. 
we have come a long way now this year we have made history not only by the election of senator kamla harris as the vice president but also a record number of law makers are elected to the state houses to all our elected state makers law makers we want to celebrate your contribution and achievement in public service and for your hard work to get elected to this position we like to introduce you to the broad indian community in the united states and also globally and hear your story on winning the election you are our role models for our youngsters and some of them have joined us at this session your success stories will motivate more indian americans to take the plunge in political process friends i am joined by gopio international coordinator for north america harbhajan singh gopio manhattan president shivendra sofet gopio new york president bina kothari gopio connecticut president ashok nichani gopio central new york president patsy lepol gopio central jersey past president dr tushar patel gopio virginia president j bandari and many other international op officials including our associate secretary jason modi prashwa kevel kanda our media council chair nami kor our international coordinator coordinator slal motwani and asha saman and of course even our academic council chair nirdya arun gupta from gujarat we also have we also have a senior political leader from connecticut former connecticut representative dr prasad srinivasan and kala srinivasan welcome you for joining us thank you for joining us and we also have the indian american indian american for biden harris co-founder dr suresh kumar we are also joined by our uh, of course the impact uh, co-founder deepak raj whom you will hear soon and executive uh, impact executive director neil makija and thank you your presence this evening makes a wonderful celebration i thank you all for joining this event and special thank to vijay gar vice president of gobio central jc who is also co-host with me in fact he is the host he also runs the indus tv and also we have mr munish gupta a gopio live member past official from delhi who runs pio tv and they are our media partners uh, indus tv pio tv and then also it is streaming through uni television all over india at this point it is my great pleasure to present you the moderator of the session raj goyal a two term kansas state house representative and currently CEO of Bod Batala Raj is also co-founder of Indian American Impact Fund Raj please take it over from me <laughs> thank you Dr Abraham thank you everybody uh, good evening it's ex incredibly exciting to be here tonight uh, a big um, i know it's it's a friday night so let's do give a round of applause to Gopio and Dr Abraham and Shivender Sofit uh, for wrangling this we really much appreciate it Uh, I want to thank Dr. Abraham, of course, and I do need to uh, say thank you to my dear friend Shivender Sofit from Gopio. Um, I, I told this story last time, but he took care of my father for an entire day, so he is uh, uh, he, he he we we hail him quite uh, quite quite heartily in our family. Uh, we have 83 people on a Friday night. Uh, that is an ex uh, an amazing record. Now, two of them are my, two are my mom and dad on separate zooms, but that's but that's okay. We we we'll, we'll take those. Uh, we'll pad our numbers that way. But this is an extraordinary evening. Um, as Dr. Abraham kindly mentioned, I have an interesting story. I was elected ten um, thousand uh, years ago in two thousand and six as one of the first Indian Americans elected in the country to uh, the state of Kansas when I was thirty one years old. And I'll tell you just very honestly and emotionally, when you win an election. and particularly your first election and for many of our electeds tonight we have 15 and i'm going to tell you i keep a tight timekeeper so i'm going to get you out of here on time tonight <laughs> but it is an a remarkable feeling when you knock all these doors you put yourself on the line if you have never run for office it's for those of you who are many in business you know you sell a product well in politics you're the product and it's a very unique feeling that you can only understand until you do it and when you win and you have the confidence of your electorate 
it's an emotional feeling that's hard to describe. And so it really, I really uh, get a little even emotional myself thinking about all these amazing electeds we have tonight, and particularly for the first time electeds. Uh, when you have that title elect, it's, it's very, very exciting. Um, I, it is a Friday night. I have some champagne here that my wife got me. Um, so I hope all of you are having a, a drink as well. Um, so I, I'm going to walk you through the agenda. I have a big, uh, I have a <laughs> good uh, Dr. Abraham. Uh, he's a doctor and, uh, you know, um, it's good to have a drink on Friday night. So, so, so you know, m medical orders. Um, I will just say quickly, um, uh, for those of you who are on our last one, uh, I am a rare Indian who keeps a tight clock. So it is, uh, so we will not take you till 830. We're not serving the roti and dal at 11 o'clock at night. Uh, we're, we, we, we know that uh, time is precious. Uh, we've got a packed agenda. We have 15 elected officials, which is remarkable. They've all got um, something to tell you. This is their night, not ours. So let me just quickly, though, introduce. Um, uh, I'm going to tell one quick story, then I'm going to get over to my impact colleagues, and then we're going to kick off. Uh, and that is when I was running, um, actually, I think I was running for the U.S. House at this time, and NPR came to do a story in Wichita. And they said, hey, so tell me, are there Indians in your district? I said, well, there's about 10. And the reporter cut me off. He goes, oh, 10%. I go, no, not 10%. There's like 10 <laughs> Indians in my whole damn district. I mean, like, I know them all. There's, you know, Dr. Reddy, and they're over here and so on. So I have to say, I remember when it was so rare to have a Desi elected that it was like, uh, it was like Haley's Comet. Like, what's going on here? And now we don't even have all of the Desi's elected tonight. Now we have 15, which is remarkable. We don't even have them all. Now, um, and that's why Indian American Impact Project, Deepak Raj, my distinguished co-founder and I started this several years ago. I'm gonna throw it to him now, but it is to this kind of night, to be honest, we anticipated it. We knew that it would come, but the notion that there's 15 of you, and then we have the vice president of the United States uh, is fairly remarkable. So I'm gonna hand it over to Deepak Raj, uh, the co-founder of Indian American Impact Project. He's a very modest man. He's one of the great philanthropists in the Indian American community, a very successful business person, the chairman of the New Jersey Pension Fund, uh, does a tremendous amount of work. Uh, Deepak, you have it for two minutes, and then Deepak will give it over to Neil Makija, our terrific executive director, one of the great political operatives in the entire country for the Democratic Party, and generally who was a uh, candidate himself for the uh, Pennsylvania State House a few years ago, and now uh, Impact, um, uh, you know, he's, got the, he's, got, he's, he's at the helm of that. So uh, with an eye on the clock, Deepak, over to you, and then over to Neil, and then, and then I'll run down the, the representatives. Over to you, Deepak. Thank you very much, Raj. Uh, I'll try to keep it to two minutes. If it gets two and a half, you know, but cut me off. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so listen, good evening, everybody. Um, it's just great to be here. I want to thank, uh, first of all, Thomas Abraham and Gopio for uh, organizing this evening. And uh, Gopio has been doing terrific work in our community for a long time not only in the US, but around the world. And I applaud Thomas and the organization for all that you do. Uh, we at Impact have enjoyed working with Gopia, and I hope that this is the beginning of a sustained collaborative effort for the uh, benefit of, uh, of our community. Siraj, so you already have met. Uh, I was just lucky to meet uh, Raj, I think 2008 for the first time, uh, when he was uh, in, in Kansas and um, and I supported him in all his races. Uh, but then after he moved to New York, you know, he, uh, he and I met a few times trying to figure out what can we do for Indian Americans in the US. And it is just, uh, I, I tell you, it's one of the highlights of my life that he and I connected up. Uh, it is, he's been an absolutely fantastic partner. He's taught me about politics. And, uh, and, uh, and we launched uh, uh, Indian American Impact um, uh, in 2016 with a very you know, simple idea, you know, a very simple mission. And the mission was that we need to get, we want to get more Indian Americans elected to public office in the US. We had our first meeting in 2016 at the Philadelphia Democratic Party Convention. 2018 was our first serious election cycle, and 12 of our 20 to 25 odd endorsed candidates won. And this included Kevin Thomas, by the way, who I hope you see today if he's available. Uh, we uh, endorsed Ram Vilivalam uh, to the Illinois uh, Senate. Uh, we had Josh Call, you know, for the uh, AG of Wisconsin, and, and so many others. So, 
So it's been, uh, it was terrific. And then obviously, as you already have heard, and you would meet the candidates uh, or the or the elected officials now, you know, today, uh, it has been a terrific year, you know, for our community uh, 2020 elections. Uh, I would like to congratulate all of the winners from our community and who are, who will be presented later. And by the way, to all of those who did not make it, congratulations to you as well for what you did. You know, as Raj mentioned, fighting elections is a hard job. And, uh, uh, and all of you, I'm sure, you know, fought a great fight. And what, what has happened with this, you know, with, with these races is that uh, every time, you know, we have a strong local candidate, as all of you are, you know, we set the stage for our community to have a much bigger role. Uh, so we owe all of you, you know, the ones who won or the ones who fought hard, you know, we owe all of you a huge debt of gratitude, you know, from our, uh, from our community. So 2020 has been a great year. Uh, Neil will go into more details, uh, but uh, mainly, you know, Raj and I decided early on in 2020 that we're going to go all in. You know, we'll fund whatever it takes. We hired a new executive director and uh, truly fortunate to be able to convince Neil Makija to join us uh, with a full staff of, uh, you know, finance, marketing, digital, and so on and so forth. Uh, we raised a lot of money this year. We raised uh, $10 million, you know, which is an all-time historical level. Uh, we never dreamt that we will raise that much, but it really has allowed us to support candidates and even more importantly, uh, to, uh, to lay the infrastructure for helping our folks, you know, for many, many years to come. Just one last thing, you know, many individuals have been amazingly supportive and have helped Impact get here. Um, you know, uh, I remember first time I had uh, breakfast with Senator Harris, actually at that time, A.G. Harris, was in 2015. Uh, you know, she has guided us. She has guided impact all along. Uh, she has appeared at our summits. Uh, she has been a true guiding light for, uh, for our organization. And uh, I'm sure we are all just feeling so proud of uh, seeing her, you know, in her new role as um, the uh, vice president elect of the United States of America. You know, it doesn't get any better than that, you know, for our community. Uh, in addition, Senator Booker from New Jersey, all of our congressmen and women, you know, Raja, Ro, Pramila, Ami, all of them have been extremely helpful to us and have guided us. And, you know, and one of the things that we sort of pride ourselves on that, uh, you know, we have role models now who are, um, who are there to help you, you know, as you, uh, as you fight uh, for, uh, for these elections. So we are looking to the future with a great deal of excitement, a great deal of energy, and we look forward to working with you again in the future and uh, to all of the other young men and women who want to uh, fight, you know, the good fight. So thanks for having me here, Thomas. I appreciate it. Uh, let me uh, swing it back over to, uh, to Raj. Uh, Deepak, thank you very, very much. And I have to say, again, he's a, a very modest person, uh, kind to say. But Deepak, uh, Deepak wrote the check uh, that started Impact. He kept writing checks. He kept funding us when there was nobody else. And, uh, you know, there's a saying in politics that early money is the most important. And, uh, you know, that's what he showed. And, of course, Gopio uh, has a remarkable track record of successful fundraising as well. So, um, we, you know, we appreciate that very much. Neil, um, you've got uh, two minutes. Give us some facts. You know, uh, look, uh, you know, there used to be Hardball and Chris Matthews and uh, John King on CNN and uh, Steve Kornacki on MSNBC. Uh, Neil, Neil's better than all of them. So uh, you don't have one of those fancy boards, but N Neil educates. I know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know. I need an interactive map, but yeah. um, but look, I'll, and I'll, I'll keep it brief because um, again, thanks everyone for being on. It's it's incredible to see all of you, um, and you know, as Raj was saying, this is really uh, unthinkable uh, a time you know not that long ago, um, definitely less than a thousand years in that. Uh, you know, even this cycle, we, uh, we're having so many firsts and I don't even know all of them. I want, I want to make sure I'm getting all of them. You know, Raj has mentioned, it used to be like the first South Asian elected in a state and we're still, we have some States like that. So Nikhil Saval is going to be the first from Pennsylvania. 
is one. Um, I know Kesha, I see you, she's going to be the first in the state Senate in, in Vermont. Um, although you were the first before when, you know, before you could probably rent a car, you were already, you know, already setting those milestones, but uh, we're also getting more specific. You know, Jeremy Cooney is the first in upstate New York now um, who's South Asian. Uh, Jennifer Rajkumar, of course, is the first in New York City. So uh, we're really starting to fill up the ranks. And if you uh, see the map uh, of the country, it's not just, you know, in New Jersey where there are, are you know, uh, 80 elected officials actually who are South Asian going down to freeholder and, and more local positions. Uh, but it's in places like Michigan, it's in Arizona. Uh, I see uh, Amish and um, uh, Ranjeev, and uh, it's really uh, something that I think is not only, uh, you know, right now we've been focused on getting folks elected, but what we'll also see, it, it's going to help up the ballot. Uh, one of the reasons we were able to raise the funds that we did this cycle is because we uh, uh, Democratic contributors and others uh, really realize the power of the of the Indian American community, and we know that the best way to turn out a new community is to get candidates from our community on the ballot, and that's kind of impacts philosophy. And that you know we're enfranchising our people by getting uh, our representative representatives elected. So with that in mind, I'm really interested to hear. Uh, now that all of you are elected, you know, what can we do and, and what can our organization uh, be uh, and, you know, kind of what purpose can we serve with you as you legislate and as you, uh, you know, promote your agendas and serve your communities? I think, you know, it's sad we didn't have an impact summit uh, in person this year. In the past, you know, we got 500 people uh, in a room, you know, leaders from across the country. We had this awesome digital summit this year, which uh, you know, we squeezed as many people as we could into uh, a couple hours, but um, hopefully post pandemic, we'll get all of you together and really get a, people a chance uh, to work together and to think about ways to collaborate nationwide. But uh, just as a resource, I'm always here. If there are ways that we can help, as Deepak mentioned, we have a, a great relationship uh, with Senator Harris and others, but uh, we want to make sure that our community is, is heard, you know, from from the top down. So uh, thank you all for all that you've done this cycle and for making us proud. Thank you very much, Neil. And I do want to reiterate and lift up for everybody on the Zoom. Neil McKeeja is a resource. Uh, we now have a, a expanding staff. If you have questions about lists, if you have questions about running for office, if you have questions about people you want to support, some of you have kids, uh, some of you have grandkids who may want to get into politics, send them our way. And we work very collaboratively with Gopio, as, as you mentioned. So thank you very much, Neil. Okay, now to the fun part, to the real stars of the show. We have 15 elected officials. Um, as I said, we're going to do two minutes each, which, by the way, elected officials are very, very good at hitting their time marks. They, uh, you know, a lot of them have knocked a lot of doors where they had 10 seconds to make their points. So we want to hear your story and so on. I'm going to go um, in a bit of a random order, uh, but I've got various requests for schedules and everything. So I'm going to do my best. I will say, by the way, quick statistics. There are uh, two Republicans and 13 Democrats tonight representing 12 different states. So I think that's a pretty remarkable um, statement in and of itself. So, um, well, let's start off with somebody who is a uh, from Pennsylvania, as Neil mentioned, Senator Dr. Nikhil Saval. And I mean, let's just say because uh, we are Indians, you know, when you have when you're a doctor and a politician, I don't know if that gives you like extra credit in the Indian community, but it should. Um, I certainly wasn't smart enough to go to med school. So uh, without further ado, uh, Dr. Senator Saval, two minutes, the floor is yours. Thank you. The doctorate is in English literature. So that is- Oh, <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's fine. You know, I, I'll take it. Um, so thank you, Raj. Uh, thank you, Dr. Abraham. Thank you, Gopio. Uh, thank you to Impact. And thank you, especially to Neil, um, a uh, great source of, of organizing and energy around our community and our people um, and, and per, a personal friend. Um, so my name is Nikhil Saval. I am going to the state senator elect for the first Senate district in Pennsylvania, which represents the heart of Philadelphia, all of the downtown and all of South Philly. Um, I am excited to be the first Indian American elected to the Pennsylvania le legislature, first Indian American in state government um, and the first Asian American in the Pennsylvania Senate. Um, I uh, ran in my campaign um, as against a 12-year incumbent, a three-term incumbent. 
Um, and we managed to win our campaign with uh, guts and with grassroots energy. Um, uh, you know, by, by nature, I'm a writer and that's, that's my day job. I'm a writer and I write for the New Yorker and the New York Times about architecture and housing, but I'm also a community and labor organizer. Um, and I brought, I think, both uh, backgrounds to bear. We had over 500 volunteers on our campaign. We raised money from over 5,000 individual contributions. Um, and we won overwhelmingly, um, you know, by, by 15% in our primary, um, ran unopposed in the general. I'm going to be the first person of color to represent this district. You know, and um, I have a father who was born under British rule. My mother was born in the first year of independence. So the, the emergence and leadership of India um, in the post-colonial world is something that has I have grown up with and I have been taught. So I'm proud to invoke those ideals in my run and in the things that we are campaigning on. Um, you know, the fact that India was a leader among post-colonial nations in the years after independence and that it led on particular ideals, ideals that I share, um, that everyone, we should fight for equity, justice, regardless, equity and justice, regardless, regardless of color, caste or class, that no one should go without housing or healthcare and that everyone has a right to clean air, water and a livable climate. Those are the things I hope to fight for in the Pennsylvania Senate. And I hope to fight with all of you and to fight for our people and our community for Asian Americans, for a, you know, a diverse, growing country, a welcoming country, and an inclusive country, and an inclusive state. So thank you again. Thank you for having me. Um, and just congratulations to all the winners. Thank you for everyone for running. Um, everyone made it possible for me, and everyone made it possible for each other, I Great. think. I'm really grateful to everyone. Thank you. App appreciate it. Congratulations again, uh, Senator. Uh, now over to the great state of Connecticut to Representative Ali Brennan. Um, floor is yours for two minutes. Well, good evening. Um, thank you, Raj. It's nice to see you again. And I just really want to say a big shout out to uh, Thomas Abraham and Anita from Connecticut. You know, I feel like I'm kind of a person who grew up with trying to struggle with my identity and what I am because my dad's from Guyana. He immigrated here. My mom's Irish Catholic. You know, they met in Queens. They moved to Connecticut for a better life for their kids that they didn't have. And, you know, I'm also one of only two openly gay legislators in Connecticut. And so just identity has always been a, a big thing. And you know, I, just a big shout out to Thomas and Anita for making me feel like family, you know, reaching out to me and, um, and finding me. And so I'm happy to be part of the, the family. And, uh, you know, this is my uh, second win. So in 2016, I ran for state rep after working in Congress for a bit. Um, there was 12,000 votes. I lost by 280 out of over 12,000. So it was close. You know, I stuck with it. I ran again in 2018. We won by over 600 out of 10,000 votes. This year it was 13,000 votes. I won by over 917. And so my district is, you know, Connecticut, people think it's blue. My district is very purple. It leans to the right. Um, you know, someone that's young like me has a, a name you can't pronounce, um, you know, someone who's gay, you have a lot of things going against you. And 89% white, the fact that we were able to hold that district for two years now, um, one in a presidential year where Trump's on the ballot. And, you know, it's been an honor to serve. And I think, you know, to people out there who have run before and lost, you know, you have to keep with it. I think the genuineness and you wanting to serve really shows through and, um, you know, just honored to be here with this, this great group of people and, you know, from all sides, you know, Republican and Democrat, I think we all have a, you know, commitment to serve. And so it's just great to be here, but, you know, I just wanted to say, you know, the journey here has been long, but um, it's all about service. And, you know, I'm happy to answer any questions, happy to have anyone reach out to me. Um, but I just want to say thank you. Well, thank you very much, Representative, and I do think it's worth noting there's a, t a, a, an evening of trailblazers, but t particularly we applaud your, uh, uh, you being a, a particular trailblazer. Uh, yeah, and I think, I think like, you know, in this community too, we, I think we have to battle a lot. You know, sometimes I do feel uncomfortable talking about it, like, you know, yeah. that I'm a gay candidate, but, you know, I don't run on being, I'm not the gay candidate. I, I am a candidate who happens to be gay and that's part of who I am and it always will be. And it's important to highlight those voices just like it's important to highlight Indian voices and you know Asian voices and you know all these marginalized groups. It's, it's important to highlight that. And so that's part of my platform, but you know I run on the platform of running to serve all people. And um, that's really what it's about. So I just feel like as I come more into myself, I understand that I'm a, more of a conduit to other voices. It's not about me. Um, and sometimes you have to embrace being uncomfortable because the campaign that was run against me was very much a playbook of the Trump playbook. And 
you know, it was negative, it was homophobic, it was racist, and you have to stay above that, understand that, you know, that's kind of unfortunately part of the game. And at the end of the day, just stick to it, be genuine and speak to the people. Door knocking is what makes a difference, especially in my district. And, and we did it. So I think. That's awesome. Well, yeah. Well, well said and eloquent. I can see why you won. So uh, <laughs> uh, congratulations again. Uh, we're going to go over to the uh, state of Ohio to um, State Senator Neeraj Antani, an old friend of mine. Uh, Neeraj, is yours for two minutes. Thank you, Raj. Sorry, I have to join by audio only. I am uh, out and about uh, at an event. Um, and so uh, really just truly honored to be here with Gopio. Thank you uh, to Dr. Abraham and to all of Gopio and the organizers. Hello to uh, my fellow now electeds and uh, elect elects. So those who are just won for their first time, congratulations. Uh, my name is Neeraj Antani. I serve currently as a state representative in the Ohio House of Representatives where I've served uh, since 2014. Uh, I was the second Indian American uh, state elected official in Ohio history, the first uh, Indian American Republican. Uh, this year, after six years in the House, I ran for the state Senate uh, and was uh, elected uh, here a few weeks ago. Uh, it was a truly an honor. I will become the first Indian American state senator in uh, Ohio history. Um, you know, want to give a special shout out to my friend Harry Aurora, who's the other uh, Indian American Republican elected official on here. We have to make sure our community is not monolithic. We can't let you know, our community become partisan because otherwise, uh, you know, parties will have it out for certain communities. And so, you know, very important for us to, to be uh, bipartisan. But it's truly, you know, been an honor for me to be able to be a voice for uh, our community. You know, like many, you know, my parents came in 1978, became citizens in 1984. Uh, and when I raised my hand on January 4th and uh, become the first Indian American state center of Ohio history, uh, it's truly a testament to every uh, Indian immigrant and family of every Indian immigrant. So if I can ever be of service, please do let me know. And uh, just very thankful to Gopio and uh, everyone for, for having me tonight. Neeraj, uh, succinct and eloquent as always, we very much appreciate it. Congratulations on the move up from the State House to the State Senate, uh, which in Ohio is a very big deal, as we all know in politics. Uh, since you gave a shout out to your friend Harry Aurora, we'd like to send it over to Connecticut to the newly elected state representative, Harry Aurora. So over to you, Harry. Two minutes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Deepak. Thank you. First of all, uh, thank you, Dr. Abram. You've always been the um, uh, help our community come together. And I remember that from nearly 20 years ago. Thank you so much for organizing this. Um, uh, this is my second, uh, this is my second term. So I was elected just to, as an introduction. Uh, my name is Harry Rora. I was elected uh, the first time uh, earlier in a special election. And I, <clears throat> I represent the 151st district, which is a part of Greenwich in Connecticut. So I'm on the extreme uh, other end uh, of the state, um, yeah, I'm 151, uh, Rajiv is well, uh, the second district. Um, the objective is to serve a community, to help make strong, robust policy. I'm a private sector guy. I spent 25 years in business. I ran my own investment fund uh, till about uh, till three years ago. Uh, and, uh, you know, now I spend most of my time and it's a really rewarding experience in solving public public problems. And it can be as simple as, uh, you know, trees behind someone's house or uh, a big policy question around uh, a certain program. So I think it's been really rewarding serving the community. And as Neeraj said, or as Rod said, uh, uh, you know, really we have the, in, in terms of numbers, about half percent of our community is, is of Indian origin. I wanna congratulate everyone uh, who, who won uh, and who is uh, today in, in this position. I think um, in my 25 years uh, of business career, what I found most fruitful was building cross relationships uh, across the uh, across other businesses, across uh, folks who would be doing similar things in different firms. And I really think this is an excellent opportunity since many of us come with similar backgrounds, similar perspectives, similar values uh, for us to really have this uh, discussion or this format to be able to share ideas, to, to be able to share um, problems which we face. Because in reality, although we are in different states, we kind of are grappling with the same problems most many times. Right now, as, as we all know, it's COVID. So I really would 
um, appreciate the opportunity to speak to individually, hopefully to each one of you, uh, spend time and build a build a bond so that as we build our uh, our own political um, endeavors, uh, we can share and we can also uh, share notes, share stories, uh, as well as um, learn from each other. And I think that's for that. I'm very thankful to to Raj, to Deepak, to and especially to Gopio for putting us all together. And I think I am hoping this is much more of a format available. It's just not a caucus, but it's a format available for mm -hmm. all of us for a continued discussion. Thank you once again, and uh, good luck to everyone. Representative, thank you very, very much. And I have to say, when I was an elected official, I loved uh, fellowship with other elected officials to solve common problems, and uh, uh, I can very much relate to that. Uh, we're going to send it down in North Carolina now to a very old friend of mine. Um, not that he, not that he and I are very old, uh, but we have known each other for a very long time. Uh, State Senator Jay Chowdhury uh, from North Carolina. Jay is on the phone, not on the Zoom. I'm sorry, not on the video. Jay, can you hear me? Yeah, th th thank you, Representative Goyle. <laughs> Uh, we, we still we got to still acknowledge your uh, your previous service in the in the state legislature, since I am very excited on being a call with uh, so many other Indian American state legislators. Uh, um, first, first, let me just thank uh, Raj and Deepak and Neil for their leadership with impact, especially after this cycle. And uh, really, I think becoming a force of nature and trying to organize uh, Indian American electeds around the country. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. And also want to Thank Dr. Uh, Thomas Abraham for his leadership in Gopio. I will tell you, uh, more than 25 years ago, when I was organizing a National Indian American Students Conference, uh, I was scanning and looking at different Indian American organizations nationally that were leading. And I still remember back then that Thomas Abraham was a real leader for our community. So it's great to be on the call uh, with you all. As uh, Raj mentioned, uh, my name is Jay Chaudhry. I serve as a member of the North Carolina State Senate. I will be starting my fifth year uh, in third term uh, next this coming January, uh, and uh, this past term, my uh, my colleagues in the Senate elected me as Democratic Whip, and so I serve as the second highest ranking member uh, in the North Carolina State Senate among Democrats. I represent uh, downtown Raleigh, um, wh which uh, uh, in Senate District Number 15. Uh, I will I will tell you a, a couple of things. One is. You know, we hear a lot from uh, Congressman Roger Chris Christenworthy about the Samosa Caucus in Congress, but I will tell you we have a lot of pakoras or idlis here on the on the call, and um, and I think one of the untold stories that probably doesn't get a lot of attention is what we're seeing at what what's happening at the uh, state house and state senate level, and I think really to to Neeraj uh, Anthony's point, I mean, I think there's a real I think there's an incredible opportunity for us to. Come, come together and reach across the aisle to figure out how to problem solve some of the issues, uh, not only for our community, for, uh, but for the country. And I think that's something unique that we have as uh, Indian Americans here. And lastly, I would say uh, that I think that impact can play a really important role here with their summit and their abilities to bring us together. So um, I'm sorry that I'm not on Zoom with you all, but I am really, really excited to just hear, to listen to all of the introductions of the new electeds here that are joining those that have been here already and uh, thanks again for the opportunity to be with y'all tonight thanks very much jay and nice use of the north carolina y'all there at the end just uh you know you're a, a lifelong north carolinian um uh congrats to all of your success um now right now uh we would have thrown it to state senator elect jeremy cooney from the upstate New York, from Rochester, which uh, obviously has incredible Indian American history. Uh, unfortunately, I guess the internet's a little spotty up there. That's a first issue he'll be fixing when he gets to Albany. So he's unable to join, uh, but we do want to recognize uh, State Senator-elect Jeremy Cooney, uh, who, by the way, ran a very valiant race in 2018, didn't get over the top, stuck with it, and has now won a resounding victory in 2020 and will join Kevin Thomas in the New York State Senate as two Indian Americans out of 63 in Albany, which is a tremendous fact, one in Rochester, one in Long Island. And uh, uh, Jennifer Rajkumar, who will be the first Indian American Assemblywoman, uh, will be uh, conveying regards from Jeremy. So um, he won't be here tonight, but he did want to convey his regards. Uh, next, we'll go to the great state, uh, great Commonwealth, excuse me, of Kentucky, which is uh, State Representative Nima uh, Kulkarni. So uh, over to you. Thank you so much. Well, good evening, everybody from Louisville, Kentucky, which is a tiny, tiny blue dot in a very red state. Um, I am very, very excited to be here and I'm thankful for 
Impact and Gopio for getting us together. Um, I ran in 2018 and defeated a 21 year incumbent um, to win the state house seat. And recently, just this past June, um, I won re-election against the same individual um, with an 80% margin in my district. And I'm not saying that just to brag, I'm saying it because my district, um, Raj, I think you mentioned you had 10 Indian families. I think there was one Indian family on the list um, at the time when I knocked on doors and they weren't home. Unfortunately, when I knocked on their doors, I couldn't even make my case as a Desi. Um, but the point is that I think we are having a moment. I think we are seeing appeal um, beyond just our community. There are folks that voted for me that couldn't pronounce my name, didn't really care where I was from. Um, and I think that goes to say that this is, this is a moment where we need to be fully engaged, fully involved um, in this country that we call home. And clearly the fact that there's almost a hundred people on this call tonight shows that we are able and willing to come together um, in service of this democracy. Um, so I am incredibly excited to see that as well um, and to be here among such um, diverse electorate and elected officials. So thank you for bringing us together. Um, so very, very uh, obviously terrific to see more women in elected office as well. Um, so, um, so we want to note that. Congratulations. And speaking of, um, of uh, women daisies who are, who are trailblazing, let's go to Michigan to State Representative Padma Kupa. Uh, the floor is yours for two minutes. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Raj. It's uh, a uh, representative. And also, thank you so much to GOPIO and also to Impact. Neil, I can't wait to have a one-on-one -on -one with you to see what we can do further. Um, I really appreciate all that you have done at Impact, both in 2018 and in 2020 for my campaign. Um, I serve in that building that you see behind me. Um, as I walked in uh, to shadow my colleagues um, in, in 2017, I was very excited, um, but I was even more excited to walk in in January of 2019 as the first Hindu, the first Indian immigrant in the legislature, and more importantly, the first woman to uh, immigrant woman to represent this district, um, first Democrat um, to represent this district. I did. I am an engineer. I never thought in my life of running for office. Um, the last time I ran for something was eighth grade Latin club president. Um, but I lived here in the United States going to public school. Then we went to India. I saw what it's like without public education. And so um, equitable public education was my middle name. I fought for it throughout my children's uh, years in, in the K to 12 system here in Troy, in uh, the two cities that I represent, Troy and Clawson, and went to Lansing to fight for it as a parent. And then eventually decided to uh, run for office so that I could be the one that fought for it for my district in the state legislature. Um, I'm very grateful to all the people that supported me both in 18 and in 20. Um, I'm looking forward, we have a three term limit in the state house. So I'm looking forward to 22 where my colleagues, uh, representatives elect Ranji Puri and uh, representative elect Dr. Sri Thanedar. Um, hopefully the three of us can help elect more uh, people so that we can support our governor, the, that woman from Michigan, and rule in the majority so that we can pass policies that help working families and that uh, align with the values that we hold as immigrants, um, supporting um, access to health care and making sure that we address the climate crisis. Uh, we have beautiful Great Lakes here in the Great Lakes state, and I want to make sure that they're available to all generations that come after us. Um, it's great to be here with so many Indian American state legislators. Last night, um, I had an opportunity to be on a welcome to our table virtual event with Senator Ghazala Hashmi uh, mm -hmm. in Virginia and Senator Manka Dingra, who in 2017 and 2019 flip their house, their Senate seats, and um, look forward to more opportunities like this to connect with other Indian American legislators and supporters like all of you who are here, both online as well as um, in the Zoom. We need to work on common issues for all of us. Uh, thank you very, very much, Representative. That was a very well said, and um, it is amazing you're name checking a few other people who can even make it tonight. So again, reinforcing how many others there are. But thank you for your service and tremendous remarks. Now up to the uh, state of New Hampshire to um, someone we know well, Representative Mangapudi. Uh, Lata, the floor is yours. 
Thank you. Namaste to all. And thank you to Gopio, Tom, uh, Dr. Thomas uh, Abraham, and special thanks to Shivinder Ji. Yeah, you, you've been very supportive. And of course, impact. I have to say this, this is my fifth term, fifth consecutive term. And, uh, you know, New Hampshire is um, New Hampshire. And, uh, but this year, it was a very special challenge because of COVID. And in New Hampshire, what we, you know, door knocking and uh, hosting events, those were the key tools that we had. And this time it was really hard. So I had to jump in, in the last eight weeks when, uh, you know, we couldn't do. And uh, so just open up our basement, open up our garage and have virtual, you know, people coming uh, to do lid drop because it was not door knocking because of COVID. And it was a tense moment. And I remember reaching out uh, the two weeks before to Gopio and Impact saying, there are a lot of mailers coming, negative ads, and we were not prepared. I wasn't prepared for it. Please help and thank you for coming through and helping me. And, you know, it is my fifth term. And there's a lot, my focus, my heart is in um, providing opportunity for people with mentally ill, vulnerable population, mentally ill, um, marginalized, uh, homeless. In fact, we had a crisis uh, unfold just a few hours ago in one of the largest cities in New Hampshire. Homeless uh, folks were kicked out of their encampment uh, by the state troopers and you know, I picked up the phone calling everybody and uh, going there to support and voice and give the support and we'll be cooking for them. We'll be providing uh, much needed uh, warm uh, blankets and stuff. So, you know, our com community has come together really well. I can proudly say that, you know, Indian community has made masks for the COVID crisis and Indian community has come together. So I'm not just representing Indian community. It was very heartwarming for me to see my constituents who recognized and say, we really appreciate you. You share your culture. You, you know, we lit uh, Diwali Diaz in uh, two city halls, three city halls uh, this past weekend. So people asking for those. They're seeing how, you know, what we are contributing, what values we bring. And I think, yes, I'm so proud. And to see, to have this camaraderie and, you know, uh, thanks to Keisha Ram, she stopped by. And yes, it's not Samosa Caucus, it's Idli Caucus because we know <laughs> Kamala Harris loves Idli yes. and uh, Masal Dosa. So soon when we can meet in person, I will be, make the Mysore Masala Dosa for the uh, whole uh, impact. Um, well, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. My treat, my thank you to all of you. And it, it's an yeah. honor. And I have to say, you guys have done an amazing job to give that support, knowing that you have our backs. Wow. We, and we, that made a lot. Well, thank you, Representative. And I think on an Indian American event, if you appeal to some home cooked food, I think you just got everyone's attention. So, um, <laughs> so in any case, uh, jokes aside, tremendous public service. We thank you. Over to Michigan, to State Representative Ranjeev Puri. Uh, you have two minutes. Thanks, Raj. Uh, hey, everyone. I uh, just want to start by thanking uh, Gopio here and Impact uh, and the hosts uh, for for this, putting this on together. And so, as Raj mentioned earlier in the call, our community has come such a long way. And so, I, I do want to thank. Everyone before me has helped uh, pave this path for, for all of us here. But again, my name is Ranjeev Puri. Uh, no relation to Amrish or Om Puri, unfortunately. But uh, I am state representative elect uh, here in Michigan. Um, and here in Michigan, we do this thing with our hand. And so for those not familiar, um, I'm in southeastern Michigan in between Detroit and Ann Arbor um, in a small town called uh, Canton, Michigan. Uh, and I'm still state representative elect because uh, some people may have heard in the news our Wayne County here has been having some trouble uh, certifying our election results. But uh, a little bit about myself. I'm a father of two small boys. Uh, my wife uh, owns a small business and I'm the son of immigrants uh, who came uh, here from, from northern India. Now those lovebirds came here about 50 years ago and they could have settled anywhere between New York City and San Diego and they picked a, a small town in the Midwest, uh, which is where I grew up. But uh, now I, you know, and I got my start 
uh, working for President Barack Obama in 2008, uh, and I was um, on his reelection campaign again in 2012, and uh, moved back to Michigan. And uh, now I live in actually one of the most rapidly diversifying districts uh, in the entire state. And I'm actually the first person of any color to hold this seat, um, the first sick American um, in the history of Michigan's legislator. Um, and it means a lot. It means a tremendous amount to me to, to break these barriers. Um, and I'm hoping that, uh, you know, I can use this platform to elev elevate all voices around the state here. Um, but I'm honored uh, to, to be here with everyone. And thanks for having me. Awesome to have you. Congratulations. That's a, that's a tremendous story. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Representative Alec Puri. Um, and so now over to someone who's already been name checked, Assemblywoman elect Jennifer Rajkumar, a very old friend of mine um, from New York City. Um, floor is yours for two, uh, two minutes, Jennifer. Thank you, Raj. I'm so happy to be with you all tonight. Uh, I, will, I am the first South Asian woman to be elected to a government office in New York State. Uh, the first South Asian to be elected to our state assembly, and the first and only Hindu American ever to be elected in New York State. And I want to especially thank Gopio uh, for your support all through the years uh, in my endeavors. I'd also want to thank, of course, Dr. Thomas Abraham, who I've known for several years, who is so wonderful and has really done so much for our community, bringing us all together. Um, also, I must uh, give a shout out to my dear friend, Shivender Sofat, who was really there for me uh, from the beginning and is just, as we all know, the kindest man ever. Um, of course, Deepak Raj, who also supported me from the very beginning and just really uh, values our community so much. And he really um, he makes sure that he supports all of us. So he's really um, incredible to, to do that for all of us. Um, also, the brilliant Neil Makija, um, how lucky we are to have him at Impact. And of course, Raj Goyal, how lucky we are to have you here in New York. Uh, you're an incredible role model and a true statesman. So thank you for all you've done. Um, and um, my, in my district, I defeated a 11-year incumbent. And people told me, you're a really nice girl, but you really have no shot here. But not only did we win, we won by the largest margin of any challenger in the state this cycle. It was the people's victory. I'm really proud of the people for coming out and, and speaking and making this happen. Uh, my background is as a civil rights attorney fighting for the vulnerable and the voiceless. Uh, I practiced law for several years. Um, I then had the tremendous honor of working for the governor of New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo, where I was the director of immigration affairs and built a $31 million program to make sure all immigrants across the state have legal representation. Uh, also, I teach as a professor at CUNY, sculpting the young minds of the future. And I'm so uh, happy to now have the opportunity to make a difference through legislation as a member of the State Assembly. And I really am looking forward to working with everybody on this call who got elected. This is such an impressive group. I'm truly blown away. And I'm honored to be in your company, especially now with coronavirus, um, massive unemployment across the country, we're rebuilding our economy. We're gonna to have to get a vaccine distributed in the next few months. Um, and as we go through this, government matters now more than ever. So I'm really looking forward to partnering with all of the incredible talent on this call to make things happen for the people. Um, and um, finally, I, I also wanted to recognize my good friend, Senator Jeremy Cooney, Senator-elect Jeremy Cooney, who was also just elected here in New York and um, is a really great friend, wonderful to work with. I know he's going to do great things as well. Uh, he had some spotty transmission uh, problems, so he couldn't um, stay with us tonight. Um, but I'm looking forward to having uh, this new Samoka, Samosa caucus here in New York State. We're going to do incredible things. Uh, so thank you all. Uh, God bless America. And I'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much, Jennifer, a Queens native. So it's really exciting to see you uh, elected out there. Um, now we're going to go up to Vermont to uh, State Senator uh, Keisha Rahm, uh, who's got a distinguished uh, service history in Vermont. Over to you, Keisha. Thanks so much, Raj, and thanks so much to all of you. Uh, it's really actually just wonderful to celebrate. We are celebrating all of you because this is your victory too. You made all of this possible. Um, and I think back to, you know, 
in 2008, when I won my race at 22, I hadn't realized that Raj had only won in 2006. He loomed so large in my memory um, because I felt so alone up here in Vermont to be graduating college and starting in the state legislature in 2008. Um, but that really goes to tell you that many of you have helped raise me politically, have helped make sure that when I win or lose or pass a bill or face a setback, um, you know, there are Indian community members there to help me learn from what just happened and to pick myself up and, and do it again. And I so appreciate all of you. It's really wonderful to follow Jennifer Rajkumar. I'm sure for me as a state senator in Vermont, I represent probably half a neighborhood in your <laughs> district as an assemblywoman, um, but also Lata G, you know, over in New Hampshire, uh, right after the election, I got engaged and I went to pick up my wedding dress in Nashua and stopped with my future mother-in-law to see Lata to eat Italy's, so you should all be very jealous. But it also just goes to show that um, we are there for each other with food, with support, with anything that's needed. Um, you know, Lata also emailed emailed Rohit. You know, I'm asking for Rokana's endorsement because it matters in Vermont, and she's emailing Rohit. You need to help Keisha in Vermont, and I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, we are such a family. This is amazing. Um, so, you know, I just want to celebrate all of you for making this possible, for helping me become the first woman of color and the youngest woman in history to become a state senator in Vermont. Um, and so I really couldn't have done this without you. It makes me think as well um, of the work that we have to do now. We have an Indian American in the White House. We are all over the place and people are counting on us to lead now. And I think back to when my father got here from Punjab and the first thing he heard was go back to Mexico. And, you know, when I was a young person in Los Angeles, I kept hearing from the police, are you Mexican? You, what are you doing out on the streets? And I moved to Vermont, a very white state. Um, but I remember talking to Raj Mukherjee and Lata Ji, and we were with uh, now ambassador Ganguly Das in New York. And I just said, you know, we sit at the cusp of a lot of identities. We have this lighter skinned privilege, but we understand what a lot of brown and black Americans are going through. And we have a great responsibility to them to lead and to serve in a way that makes sure that we widen the circle of democracy, that we make our country more reflective and that we stand up for justice when and where we can. Um, so I just stand on the shoulders of so many of you who fought a lot of injustice and a lot of bias um, and misunderstanding to make it possible for me to be here today as a Hindu Jewish American who grew up in an Irish pub in Los Angeles and is serving in the Senate in Vermont. This is your wow. victory. And I'm just really grateful to all of you. Thanks, Keisha. That's, that's American in a nutshell right there. So uh, congratulations again and all, for all that you've done. Uh, we're going to go down out west to Arizona, where uh, Representative Dr. Amish Shaw uh, pinged me. He's actually seeing patients right now. So uh, there he is in scrubs in the stethoscope. <laughs> so you're, you're shaming us all. But please, uh, 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 Representative, the floor is yours. Yeah, no, I, I know. I, I know that uh, the Indian mom somewhere is saying, oh, see, he's a doctor and a politician, right? I, I know I know how that feels for a lot of us Indians growing up. Um, thank you all. Thank you, Raj, Neil Makija, specifically, Gopio and Impact. You guys have been absolutely amazing. I, I'm just so heartened to be on this call and, and see all these wonderful folks here. Um, it, it's it's amazing not to, to feel so alone all of a sudden, uh, you know, and, and watch seeing all these beautiful voices all across the country. Um, my name is Amish Shah. I am an emergency physician. As you can see, I'm, I'm in the hospital right now and uh, really honored to be on this call. Um, I actually just got reelected to my second term. Uh, I'm finishing up my freshman term in the Arizona House of Representatives. Like many others on this call, I am also the first one uh, of Indian descent ever elected to the Arizona legislature. Um, Two years ago, I also beat an incumbent. Uh, I represent uh, Central Phoenix and South Scottsdale. Uh, one of the, the real joys for me was how we ran our campaign. Um, we wanted to do a very, very grassroots effort. And so for about 18 months, I uh, took my practice. I cut it back to one day a week and I knocked doors from 10 a.m. to sundown for 18 straight months. And, and we eventually hit uh, well, really, it was just me. I, I did not really want volunteers knocking doors. So we hit 8,034 doors over 18 months. 
And, and that was really the, the whole effort that, that took us over the finish line. And we won in, in a big way. Um, you know, I, I represent Central Phoenix, South Scottsdale. I'm, I'm a Democrat. I, most of my voters are really, really concerned about health care and education as being two of our biggest issues, uh, especially here in the state of Arizona. Um, as you know, Arizona is uh, a state that has been changing a, a little bit uh, in, in terms of its orientation, and we're, we're solidly a battleground state. So we've certainly seen our share of ads and, and our share of uh, attention nationally, uh, and I'm glad to be a, a part of that. And uh, hopefully that means a, a lot more good representation for the people here. Um, so um, I just want to say thank you once again to all of you. It's it's Great to see you. I hope to connect with all of you and uh, and to stay in touch. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Representative, and thanks for your service to the community, not just uh, in the state ledge, but also in the emergency room, especially given a global pandemic. So thank you for that. Last but not least, to uh, um, Representative Shreet uh, Tanedar in Michigan, uh, who uh, I know has been uh, here for the entire time. So please close us out. Uh, um, and, and again, a, a, another doctor here. So uh, over to you. Uh, Raj, thank you. Thank you, Impact. Uh, and thank you, Gopio, for uh, hosting this event. Uh, it's so nice to see uh, all of the uh, Indian American representative across the country. Oh, what a great country our is. Can you imagine so many immigrants or people of uh, Indian descent getting elected to public office? And also, what a great thing that uh, the community uh, and its commitment to public service. Uh, in 2018, uh, I ran for uh, governor of Michigan uh, in the Democratic primary against uh, Gretchen Whitmer. And uh, I did not obviously win that governor race, but I got about 18% of the votes, over 200,000 uh, votes, and I won the city of Detroit. And uh, not wanting to give up, uh, um, I decided to run for state rep and I won the state rep election from uh, city of Detroit where 90% of the residents are uh, African Americans. Uh, so uh, I uh, am an immigrant, immigrated here uh, to get a PhD in chemistry. Uh, then I ran several businesses, bought businesses, sold businesses. At one time had over 500 employees so I'm a serial entrepreneur, uh, but at one point I felt that uh, I have gotten so much from this great country of ours and it's time for me to give back. And with that uh, feeling, I ran for public office and I'm proudly representing uh, um, the city of Detroit. Uh, I um, am uh, focused um, on uh, uh, education, Detroit, uh, especially 30% uh, um, uh, below poverty uh, in, my, in my district. Uh, uh, you know, we need to create opportunities. Uh, I want to bring uh, entrepreneurship to the city of Detroit, to the inner city, to the young. I want to create a black Wall Street right here in Detroit, uh, focus on uh, uh, small business ownership among African-Americans is uh, something that I want to do. I want to improve the schools and the education system. So I'm really uh, excited to uh, be in the state house along with uh, uh, Padma Kupa and Ranjit Puri. So thank you for inviting and thank you for letting me speak. Thank you so very much. Congratulations on your um, election. And so uh, with that, we went through uh, 14, um, uh, 13 speakers, uh, uh, two who uh, weren't able to make it. But um, uh, I will note the time. We're at 8.08 p.m. So we were we were on time, which uh, not only is trailblazing uh, all these electeds, but an Indian American event that is on schedule. So um, so with that, uh, we, we very much appreciate all of your time. We have a couple closing speakers uh, who are who are terrific as well. So uh, I'm going to throw it now over and I will conclude my portion of the evening. Thank you very much for having me. And I will now introduce Dr. Tushar Patel from Gopio, Gopio to, 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 to close, close us out. Us out. And, and uh, uh, over, over to you. Thank you, Raj. Good evening, everyone. First of all, sincere appreciation to Indian American Impact Fund and Gopio chapters, along with Indus TV for hosting this wonderful event. 
It is such an incredible platform to bring Indian American winners under one roof and kudos to all for the job well done. Living in this country for more than three decades and involved with Gopia for more than a decade and many other organizations in New Jersey for the past 25 plus years, I can tell you that there is a need for young Indian Americans to get involved with public service at various levels. I wanted to share some initial thoughts to initiate a nonpartisan political support group to provide guidance, mentorship, and resources to empower young and enthusiastic Indian Americans who are committed to serve in the government or running for the public offices from school board to the US Senate. So some of the objectives and goals we are looking to have are empower Indian Americans to take leadership roles in the US political system, provide mentoring to young professionals from senior elected or public service officials and inspire them to get involved in public service, not only in running for the office, but other government services as well. I just retired from the US government after 27 years of service and I know how important is minority or South Asians or Indians to be in the government system. Help with fundraising events and provide resources for them. Media outreach to amplify the voice of elected professionals and independent of party affiliations, Democrat, Republicans, doesn't matter, or independents, all are supported. To keep in uh, mind these objectives, we can meet these candidates and schedule interview with them to research what support do they need and provide resources so they can get involved with running for the public offices from the beginning to provide them correct information and support, understanding the processes, forming the political action committee, uh, fundraising, caucuses, and many other logistical processes for a successful run of the public office, which is a challenge for many Indian Americans. With our resources, networking, and pool of experts, this would be a good initiative to create a political platform for the young individuals who are inspired for public service. So I'm looking, uh, Gopio, to take this initiative uh, and, and, and take this to a next level to help our Indian Americans in, in the public offices. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for joining. It's not late, but I will say happy Diwali to all. Various Gopio chapters and officials who joined us today. Uh, Special thanks to Impact and Neil. Uh, this is a great partnership which we are building and we need to keep this momentum and do more work in this field. And I especially thank uh, our co-host Vijay Garg because apart from co-hosting, he is also a media partner with us with his Indus TV. And I also thank uh, PO TV and Dr. PO TV and uh, Manish Gupta for that. Raj, you are always kind and available and nice enough and always stickler to time to end it in a very timely manner. Uh, what to say about Deepak Raj? He has been helping not only the political candidates, but also helping in so many initiatives, including his uh, contributions to Columbia and other organizations. So big out, shout out for him. And it, this can't be possible without uh, all the support and guidance and support from Dr. Thomas Abraham. He has been doing this like Deepak Raji, for 40 years, both of these are like, have been doing it almost over age, it, this thing. And uh, thank you to all the candidates who took time out of their busy schedules. So we really have, want you guys to keep on doing the good work as Gandhiji. I remember that quote and Jennifer also echoed that in our last session that we have to take care of poorest of the poor. So every policy decision which you guys are making, as long as it is taken in that sense, I think it helps. And more so apart from helping everyone, it is your role as mentors to the youth. I know I have a 18 year old 
who is seeking uh, mentorship with neil and raj all the time because he wants to also go into public service and jennifer is kind enough she said i will help her so i i need that uh, i think more and more i saw in the chat uh, from california where they said hey we need this mentorship from these elected officials so we need to make that work somehow and i will encourage all the members to spread the word to become members of gopio as well as sport impact so that we can support all these more and more candidates because we have so many won and we have so many who have lost also so we had more candidates who have run and next 2022 we hope more to run because in new jersey we even the senate seat uh, was for the republicans the, both the two candidates on the top were indians and then and then in the end the republican candidate lost but it was just the two indian candidates which speaks a lot so not taking a lot of time I again thank you everyone and we will conclude this thing uh, with a video and then we will open the floor uh, if candidates can spend some time anybody who has time who can stay there to answer some questions it will we will really appreciate that uh, it's already 8:15 we know it is friday but we will appreciate if people can stay because people have uh, wanted to interact they have questions which they want to ask about uh, their experiences or something like that uh, thank you thank you again for all joining thank you